Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. And we are doing our favorite videos today. <laughs> We're talking about our July reads. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jessica's got me. more of a stack. She's a show off. I did have a, I did pretty well in July. Yeah, I did not, but I read two really good books, so that's a win for me. Um, yeah, so let's start with the one that I know that we both read, which is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. We have been trending on this matching book a month thing. We have. I think um, I think it's something we should keep in the loop. At least one book going forward. <laughs> well, we're having a hard enough time in August, both of us. No, I, I'm doing a terrible job in August. Um, anyway, I love this one. Can we talk this cover first? It's incredible. This cover blow. I mean, I would have bought this book. I actually did. I bought this no book based entirely. So don't tell me people don't judge a book by the cover. No, this cover is incredible. And it exactly evokes what the story is, what it wants you to evoke. Yeah. Yeah. So you loved this one. I loved it. I, I have been wanting to read, I think as spooky season approaches, as yeah. is the very trendy thing to say right now, I've been wanting to read um, more horror. And I think she did this so well. It was so atmospheric and I really enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much as you did, but I realized I didn't love that much in July. So that might've just been me. Mindset. Yeah, but... Um, I think it was an incredible book. I think it is an incredible horror. I think it reminded me that I'm probably not a horror reader, which is probably yeah. why I didn't love it. But yeah, the atmosphere, um, the writing, I was yeah. sucked in from the beginning. She's so good. And um, I've read a couple other of her books and I know she just optioned the film rights. Yeah, so that's gonna be, I think a TV show on, on Hulu or something like that, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be great. Oh, totally. I think that you can really pull that out in a creepy way. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, what I will say is, if you buy this for the cover, you won't regret it. No, not even a little bit. And horror readers, I feel you must read this one. It's yeah. like a 2020 must read for horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But okay, now show me up with your four other books. <laughs> well, um, I have my piece of paper. I'm going to do two right now, and then I'll finish off with last. Um, my audiobook. For July, and I didn't do one in August, I don't think, but audio is Ilhan Omar's book. She's a um, congresswoman from Minnesota. It's, I'm going to hold it up again. Um, this is what America looks like. And um, she is, she came to America as a refugee. She's an immigrant from Somalia, and I really knew nothing about her. Um, so I think that's kind of that's kind of the way I've been picking up books lately. I haven't thought about it too hard. I've just picked up a book and just started reading. And that's why I've been able to read so much. Um, and I, I'll admit, I don't always finish them. I don't feel like I have to finish them if I don't I've want to. I've given up on forcing myself to finish books. Yeah. But um, Elhan Omar's story is incredible. And She's she, a senator in Minnesota now, right? Yeah, congresswoman. Congresswoman. Yeah. And um, I... I knew not, like I said, I knew nothing about her. Her story is amazing. And she, even as a kid, the way she describes her, first of all, I'm glad she wasn't my kid because she was a handful. <laughs> <laughs> but you can really, I mean, you know, for any parent who has a kid who they're constantly throwing their hands up about, um, they could become a congresswoman, really. She proves that correct. But um, she's powerful. Like she really um, very quickly became a role model based on this book. Oh, I really awesome. recommend this story. It was amazing. And she reads it, right? Yeah, and I, I love, love um, I have decided I'm not a biography reader, but I love listening to people tell their own story. Yeah. Um, because when, so, and I've said this before, but when somebody tells their own story, they bring emotion into it that a narrative- All the right parts that- Oh, I mean, I think in every book I've read, there's this moment where I'm in tears because I can hear the tears in her voice. And, you know, I had, had the same when I read Michelle Obama's book. And there Nova. are moments that their emotion comes through so much that you can't hold back that maybe if I read the book, I wouldn't have had the same reaction. Yeah, I agree. Michelle Obama did such an amazing job uh, narrating her audiobook, And Trevor Noah, too. Oh, Trevor Noah's was great, too. Was so good. 
Yeah, and it's interesting because I, I watch and listen to Trevor Noah differently now that I have read his book and know his story. Um, the other night I was listening to him and he um, used a reference as somebody as a DJ. And I remember from the book where he had the friend, or was he the DJ? Uh, so I, anyway, I caught the reference immediately to his connection with his childhood, which was really cool. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so then I read Last Hang Standing. Oh, I remember this one on the yeah. book in Slack. Yes, yeah, so Jessica Alvarez recommended this because um, I believe, I don't know if it was the last one we did or two of our videos ago, I had talked about Kevin Kwan because I'd read his latest. And um, I still love Kevin Kwan, really love Kevin Kwan. If you write like Kevin Kwan, I would love to see your book. But because of that, Jessica recommended Last Tang Standing, which is funny. This is more of a romantic comedy than I think Kevin Kwan writes. Um, but this was a lot of fun. And honestly, this title, this cover yeah. is great, but this title is brilliant. You see how I get so sucked in and become the publishing professional so fast? It's about the cover, it's about the title. <laughs> um, but this is a lot of fun. And this is um, a lawyer, you know, who has lots of fails in love. And, um, but if you're a romantic comedy person, rom-com reader, definitely check that one out. Awesome. Well, I read um, Blacktop Wasteland, which was like one, sorry, the lighting is terrible, <laughs> which was one of my more anticipated books this year, but it is a crime novel. It came out from Flatiron, I think in, I think in July, but it's about a getaway driver who sort of gets sucked back into his life. And it is so good. It was one of those things. I did not see that the twist's coming. Oh, I like that. Which is very rare for me because I feel like I'm always kind of um, like two steps ahead and I ruin the book for myself. But yeah. I just like let myself read this one and not try to predict everything. And it was such a like quick paced, really fun crime novel. So I oh, love it. Check that out. Yeah, I, I can bring it next time I stop by the office. The cover is very nonfiction to me. It looks a little like a memoir. I would have, it's a good thing it says a novel because I would have thought memoir. I it did. I thought that it looked a little like a memoir too, but there's something that feels big book to me about it. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, I love the really cover. Love it. Uh, talk about cover. Today's cover day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, but I definitely want to pick up more books by S.A. Cosby because he has like such a, um, like a quick pace to his writing, oh. which I love. Like I love when I read something and then before I know it, I'm 50 pages in and that's how I felt about this. Oh, it was I just really fun. Right now. Yeah. So, and that first chapter, oh my God, the first chapter alone, which is probably the reason why I could not put it down. The first, it starts with a bang and then that's oh. it. Like you can't, yeah. you're hooked in. Which Okay, so my question to you is to writers, is that first chapter a really good example for them all to look at when people say begin at the action? For, for mystery and suspense, totally. And crime, yes. I think this is a great first chapter to read because it really, I mean, I could not have in good conscience put this book down after reading that first chapter. Like if I had never finished the book, I would have been so disappointed in myself <laughs> because I thought the first chapter so brilliantly, um, it just, Everything was great, like character, plot, you know, the hook, everything. Did you ever read The Dry, and I can't remember the author? Jane Harper. Australian? Yeah, Jane Harper. It's on my yeah. shelf somewhere. Jane Harper, The Dry. I believe her book opens with a prologue. And yeah, and The Murder. And that is the best prologue I've ever read. Yeah. And I, you know, everybody knows that I'm not a huge fan of prologues because I usually think that they are a crutch and a lot of prologues especially like if it's a serial killer book are all the same that I see not necessarily in published yeah, books it's told from the killer's point of view and but when I read that James Harper prologue I was blown away same thing I had to finish that book because yeah. it started out so great well I think yeah I think that's another good example for first of all great crime fiction but yeah. also like a great opening with a bang yep yep yeah. Definitely. This is definitely on par with that, though. Okay, put it on my list, please. Put it in my pile. I will. <laughs> so, you read this a few months ago. I did. I loved it. 
A Vanishing Half, Brit Bennett, and I know Joss Galvarez just read it too. It was a whole bookends book club. <laughs> yeah, I was obsessed with this book the minute I heard about it because it is so my kind of hook. It's twin sisters, and I don't, I think I can do this without giving spoilers. Twin sisters who I believe at 17, 18, run away from home and just kind of disappear. Um, and they're black and they live in a community a, a black community but it's a community that prides itself on being light-skinned black so they disappear and one of them proceeds to live her life as an adult by passing as white while the other one lives her life as a black woman and um and they completely lose touch with each other um they live completely separate lives um the sister who lives her life as a black woman has no idea what happened to her sister. Um, she knows she's alive, I guess, but she doesn't know. She just kind of disappeared one day. Right. So it's, it's fascinating. I and, love um, stories that do that, like that kind of weave the past and present together and then weave different characters together. I think it's so masterful and it, it yeah. makes for like a really, for me, a really satisfying book when they all come together. Yeah, there are, I believe, two to four different storylines in this book that weave together the big story. I mean, yeah. each sister, their daughters, and then the convergence of the storylines. Yeah. So um, this is really, I mean, Britt Bennett is an amazing writer, and I have not yet read her first book, The Mothers, but it is on my list. Did you read yeah, it? It's, no, it's on my list because I've heard great things about it. Yeah, me too. So, so yeah, this, um, this one's running through book guns. Everybody's reading it. Yeah. You should too. Who gets it next? <laughs> right. Pretty much. Pretty much. So that uh, was it. Not many reads this month. Well, I think what we, we read quality books. So <laughs> that's what we'll say. <laughs> well, July was busy. We were super and super busy. And I mean, we're still reading almost a book a week. So. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my August, I've already got three books ready. So we hope that you'll come back and join us next month to talk about what we read in August. And we'd love to hear what you read in July because I think we're always looking for a good um, recommendation. So drop yep. them in the comments. Definitely. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see us next time. We will talk to you soon.